At first glance, LG's new flagship, the LG G4, resembles its predecessor, the G3. On paper, the Snapdragon 808 chip inside is not Qualcomm's best chip. I'll be honest, I didn't really have huge expectations for the G4. So were my initial impressions coming out of the launch wrong? Or is this just another incremental update whose sole reason for existence is to keep up with an annual release cycle? Well, let's find out. But before we do, if this is your first time here or in case you just can't remember, my name's Ash, this is C4E Tech and you're watching my full review of the LG G4. Let's get started. As always, let's start with the build. To the front, on top, we have a notification LED, 8 megapixel front-facing camera, sensors, and a earpiece. Lower below, we have the 5.5 inch display and LG branding at the bottom. To the back, we have a 16 megapixel rear camera flanked by the laser assist for autofocus and the LED flash color spectrum sensor combo. Lower below, we have the volume keys with the power button at the middle. And at the bottom, we find the internal speaker and G4 branding. With the keys on the back, we have nothing to the sides. The IR blaster on the secondary noise cancelling microphone can be found up top. The primary microphone, the 3.5mm headphone jack and a USB OTG enabled micro USB port reside at the bottom. The back is user removable and inside we find the micro SIM and micro SD card slots along with a 3000mAh user replaceable battery. If you follow me on social media, you'd know that in recent times I've kind of fallen out of love with large screen devices. But the G4, despite its 5.5 inch display, almost 10 mm thickness and 155 gram weight, didn't feel bulky. The slightly curved display, the curved back, it all helped with the ergonomics. I really like how the G4 feels in hand. It's also worth noting that there are a bunch of replaceable backs including genuine leather and ceramic options available for the G4. While built-in ergonomics are great, they don't amount for much without the horsepower to back it up. Like I said at the start of this video, I wasn't really happy with, with LG going with the Snapdragon 808 here. Snapdragon 808, that's two high-powered Cortex-A57 cores clocked at 1.8GHz each and four power-efficient Cortex-A53 cores clocked at 1.44GHz each, coupled with an Adreno 418 GPU and 3 gigs of RAM. On paper, this seemed weak when compared to the Snapdragon 810. So one of the first things I did once I got my a G4 is try to figure out why LG went with the 808 here. And the answer lies with the 810's heating issues. I have an entire video showing you guys why LG chose the 808 over the 810 for the G4 and why that was a great choice. The short version is that the 810 heats very quick and that leads to a lot of throttling, meaning the real world performance of the 810 is much lower than that of the 808. I'm glad to see sense prevail and LG not just ignore the issue because at the end of the day, I choose a phone that actually performs well or another that just looks better on paper. And the G4 does perform well, and not just with synthetic benchmarks, but even with real-time usage scenarios like gaming, no matter what game I threw at it, it managed to run it with ease, didn't heat up to alarming levels either. Good stuff from LG. Now, call quality and audio via the earphones were great, and the rear speaker, okay, let's take a minute here. These days, I see people being a little too critical of speaker placements. While speaker placements are important, speaker placements do not equal speaker quality. Just because it's not a front-facing speaker doesn't mean the speaker is bad or vice versa. With that in mind, the LG G4 has a great internal speaker. It's loud, the output's full and rich, and with the curved back, it doesn't get muffled all that often. Now let's move on to the display. The LG G4 sports a Gorilla Glass covered 5.5 inch Quad HD Quantum IPS display, giving it a pixel density of 538 pixels per inch. As expected, the display is sharp, the contrast and color accuracy has improved a lot since the G3, the screen is also brighter meaning you shouldn't have issues using the G4 outdoors. Now all this is powered by a 3000mAh user replaceable battery and the battery life is good. On a looping video playback test, the G4 lasted a little over 9 hours before running out of juice. It got me through a full day on a single charge on each of the 10 days that I used it as my daily driver. My regular day involved a lot of social media, mails being pushed, meaning 3G and Wi-Fi always on, some audio via Bluetooth, checking out YouTube videos for maybe 30 minutes, overall 3 hours of screen on and the G4 got me through the day with about 30-40% to 40 juice left. So you could expect about 4-4.5 to 4 and a half hours of screen on time. 
Sadly though, the G4 doesn't have wireless charging built in. And as of now, information is a little unclear about quick charge as well. For what it's worth, my G4 takes about 40 minutes to go from 0 to 50. With that, let's now move on to the camera. I've already uploaded a dedicated in-depth camera review for the G4 and I'll leave a link to that video in the description down below and a card here as well. But the short version is that the camera performs very well. 16 megapixel, 16 to 9 sensor with an f by 1.8 aperture results in some detailed images with beautiful bokehs. Color reproduction is accurate, even more so than the Galaxy S6. It's quick to focus, nails white balance and exposure most times and performs well even under low light. I love how the G4 increases shutter speed rather than crank up ISO under not so optimal lighting conditions. There's also a manual mode included that gives you a lot of versatility. There's even support to shoot in RAW giving you the freedom to mess around with the picture later in post. The 8 megapixel front camera is also good but I feel LG could have benefited from using a wider angle lens here. Strangely, the G4 doesn't have support for shooting 1080p videos at 60 frames per second, but the full HD and 4K footage is pretty good. A lot of detail, natural colors, the 3-axis OIS does a good job here. So with that, we get to the software. The G4 runs on Android 5.1 Lollipop with LG's custom Optimus UX 4.0 on top. And I for one like LG's UI here. It's fast, fluid, doesn't lag, but has a ton of features built in. For starters, there's the dual window mode, just like Samsung's multi-window, this lets you run two apps side by side. The keyboard can be resized easily. You also have the Q-Slide apps that float on screen and the transparency option makes it really easy to use them. LG's implementation of the IR remote is another I liked a lot. Instead of having to open a separate app, you can toggle it from the notification bar. Makes a lot of sense and for the first time in a long time, I found myself actually using the IR remote as in I used it because I wanted to, not because I had to to test it. Double tap to wake and sleep and the knock code are also present and accounted for. Overall LG's UI is very fast and stable, apps open up quick, there's no lag, multitasking is a breeze and you, the user experience here is top notch. So with that we get to the price and the official pricing for the G4 is yet to be announced but rumors indicate that the G4 should be priced at least 4 to 5 thousand rupees or 60 to 80 US dollars cheaper than the 32 gig variant of the Galaxy S6. And that's a pretty decent price in my honest opinion. LG has kinda surprised me here with the G4 and after spending time with this phone I feel LG finally has a compelling alternative to Samsung's flagship. Well yes, it's not gonna outspec the S6 thanks to the sheer horsepower Exynos 7420 brings to the table. The G4 does offer a comparable user experience, albeit with a larger display, a user replaceable battery and support for microSD cards. So there you have it, my two cents on the LG G4. What do you guys think? Do you think LG's done enough to make you wanna give the G4 a shot? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So I guess with that we get to the end of this review, hope you liked it, hope you found it useful. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up, if you didn't, vote it down, do let me know what I can do to improve and hopefully I can take, I can turn that thumbs down into a thumbs up pretty soon. So, uh, and by the way, if you haven't subscribed already, please do and if you do want to help the channel out, please do consider changing your Amazon or Flipkart URL to the one with our affiliate ID that's in the description down below under the where to buy section so that every time you shop we get a little something and that'll help. So, thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ashia from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye bye now.